Our uh, first guest, the uh, CEO and president of the Better Business Bureau serving Eastern Michigan, Melanie Ducanel. Hey there, how are you? I'm good, Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. And Melanie uh, came bearing gifts, including this coffee table book, Michigan Street. Now, just about every town in Michigan has a Michigan Street or Michigan Ave. Is that the idea? It kind of, sort of, but he yeah. just, Glenn Stevens is the actual photographer, and he just loves all things Michigan. And this would be a great Christmas gift, and I'll, I'll tell you why for uh, people in Jackson, because it has, now let's see if find I can it. stumble on it. Yeah, there it is. It has some uh, murals from Bright Walls. So, more from Jackson than this. Uh, coffee table book. Right. So check it out, Michigan Street. Great, thank you. No problem, my pleasure. So with the holidays, there must be a, a season for scams. It, it, I, I wish it was just a season of scams and we could call it that, but the biggest one right now is puppy scams. So Puppy um, scams? Yeah, somehow people think it's okay to buy dogs online. Oh my you know, gosh. So, you know, it's a cute little beagle, or the biggest one right now is the French Bulldog. Everybody wants one of those. Mm -hmm. And sadly, if you actually took a picture and did a reverse look up online, you'd find that it was a stock photo from Getty or somebody else, mm -hmm. Shutterfly or whatever. And the difficulty is, is that if you can't see the dog, don't buy the mm -hmm. dog. It's really simple, but people are rushed. People don't know where the breeder is, and if they really want a particular type of dog, that breeder may not be close, but the scam artists are everywhere. So people will get in the car and they'll go to uh, Angola, Indiana right. to think they're picking up a puppy, and uh, they get to the address and it's a vacant lot. Correct. And or they'll get as far as, OK, well, your credit card failed. Can you pay me through Venmo or Cash App? Ooh. And so the minute that happens, your money is long gone. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because you you can stop a charge on your card. Right. But you can't with Venmo or. Right. So. Yeah. You know, when, when breeders are reputable, they will be associated with the American Kennel Club. They will be able to give you people to speak with that can actually visibly show you their dog. So mm -hmm. I have a particular breeder in mind that they will actually give the person um, another family that they've had dogs. Mm -hmm. And at, in this particular situation, they actually have three dogs from this particular breeder. So they can see how this, these dogs have progressed over time. And, um, and they really try to find somebody that's close by. So if the purchaser is looking for, to see the dog in person, they'll be able to stop by. Mm. The client's ab absolutely willing to, to show off the dogs. And I think the breeders, they want to know that the home that their dog is mm -hmm. going to meets their standards right. too, right? So, you know, and the other thing about puppy scams is that some people will try to adopt a dog that may be needing a fostering or something like that. Also be careful about those because you don't know what the story is behind that and you may not know who that fostering organization is. So you have to make sure that you've got all the things you need. You're mm -hmm. going in for a long-term relationship because dogs live for 10 to 20 years sometimes. So you got to make sure that you're not going to just have a dog and then give it up after a year. And then there's the people that steal dogs. And mm -hmm. so I think, was it Lady Gaga? She had her dog walker attacked. Yeah, and actually shot. Yeah. So it's very scary. So, But uh, the losses this year are going to be in excess of $2 million. And that's only for the people that report to the Better Business Bureau. Mm -hmm. The Federal Trade Commission is anticipating it to be three or four times that amount in cash losses. Wow. Beware. Be scared. <laughs> you know, when we have great, uh, we have the Cascades Humane Society and the animal shelter, and they do, they end up with some pure breeds sometimes. Right, right. Yeah. You know, and if you're going to buy a dog for Christmas and the person that you're buying it for is not involved in the transaction, you may just want to wait until after Christmas so they can be involved. So mm -hmm. if you're going to buy it for your mom, you know, you want to make sure that that person can handle that type of dog. Mm -hmm. And so sometimes just a picture of a dog in a box given to the, to the recipient might be a better strategy. Yeah, and I think the Humane Society will recommend you don't have that as a Christmas surprise under the tree. Right, yeah. right. 
All right, um, Facebook. Uh, Facebook. That's a good uh, point uh, spot where uh, scams like to live. Yep. <laughs> so remember, overall, if you're shopping on Facebook or you're looking to help somebody out on Facebook, Facebook is not verifying all that information. So start there. But the biggest thing right now that's happening that, again, they're pull the scammers are pulling at the heartstrings is that they want to take a situation where somebody needs something desperately and you want to promote that situation so more people will get involved. You can relate it actually to fostering dogs. That's a mm -hmm. great one. But the thing is, is that the scam artist now takes your post that you've shared with all of your friends and changes into a rental house scam. Uh. <laughs> So people are thinking that they're going to get this lovely house that the scammers put up and lo and behold, there's no such house. They're getting all this personal information, including credit card information and um, personal identifying information like your social security number. And the result is you don't get the house that you're hoping to rent. So know what you're posting, know who you're posting from and make sure that you're checking on a regular basis that you have your two-factor authentication set up with Facebook, that you're posting stuff that you find is not going to include other people in their personal information. Mm -hmm. And when it does happen, report it immediately to Facebook so they can shut the scammer down. Now you mentioned uh, do an image search uh, for the French Bulldog, but you can also do that for these kinds of scams. Absolutely. So any pictures that you see come through your email, your text, um, Facebook, and you're questioning, by all means, do a reverse image search. Now, I will also share that I use a lot of GIFs, you know, so pictures with funny little sayings on it mm -hmm. and stuff. Those are replicated all the time. So just know what you're using and, and don't automatically think it's a scam, but just know where it's coming from. Yeah, and I think your advice, which applies to everything, every day, if it sounds too good to be true. It is. Yeah. It's not even probably. It is. It is. <laughs> it is. All right, so uh, next we um, have something happening via text messaging that's so, a scam. So I'll use myself as the example. In the last two weeks, I have gotten four different texts saying that I'm getting my Amazon Prime account charged $700 to $900. And to stop that from being processed, I just have to press this link. Mm -hmm. Uh-uh. Nope. Don't worry about it. What you can do just to verify that everything is okay is go to your Amazon account separately. If you have the app, go through your app connection. If you're on your computer, type in Amazon.com. Do not use anybody else's link. But, you know, be in the driver's seat put that in and then verify your account information again do you have two-factor authentication i know that sounds like oh my gosh i have to do two different things mm -hmm. in the long run it is definitely worth the effort and for people that have iphones you can use your face recognition if you're using your amazon account on your phone mm -hmm. so it's pretty simple but um it's worth it in the long run yeah and the, and the really They've made it easy so that if you do it on your phone, all you have to do is click copy right. and paste it and that's, there you're done. Right. And the other thing about tech scams right now is that they're also using it for delivery, for your package delivery. Mm -hmm. And if you get, if you've asked, let's say UPS or the Postal Service to send you an update on your package being delivered to wherever it's going, I'll use my son's example he's in the united kingdom gosh only knows when it's ever going to get there <laughs> but instead of taking the text that's going to come through my phone i'm actually going to go to usps.com and put it in there mm -hmm. and and do my tracking number through there it saves you a lot of effort in the long run of having to clean up some disaster later on so how does the text how what are the scammers doing if so they're sending you a text? They're or? sending us a text and they're trying to get personal information. Okay. So, you know, they'll ask for a credit card to verify the transaction. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just what I want to do. Give me, let me just give you my money. It'll be great. <laughs> it's so much easier. <laughs> you know, I waste all my time on the phone or on the, on the back and forth. 
Um, now, a lot of people are um, shopping online, so right. there's choices. Um, you can use your credit card. You can use Venmo, mm -hmm. PayPal, uh, Google Pay, Apple Pay. There's so many different things. Is there more security one way or the other when you're shopping online? When you're shopping online, probably your credit card is always the best alternative. Mm -hmm. Now, PayPal is generally using your credit card as the platform. Mm -hmm. So, um, and PayPal has been fairly secure of recent. They had some real challenges several years ago, but they've been really secure lately. Um, Google Pay, Apple Pay, I haven't heard a bunch of challenge, but again, I would much rather advise everybody shop local, pay with cash, because <laughs> <laughs> it just saves everybody, and it yeah. also emboldens and, and grows your own community. Yeah, and some people, you go to a stadium, they don't even take cash. Correct. Or the airport now. That's right. So if you want to go to Panera at the airport in Phoenix, they do not take cash. They mm. only take cards. So anytime you're traveling, if you can use your credit card versus a debit card, you're protecting the cash in your account. When you um, give them your debit card, you're leaving yourself open for them to scoop all that cash right out of your account. And they can. And they do. And they do. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. but yeah, so if you're traveling in the snow, pack your woolies, pack your boots, and pack some cash. <laughs> yeah, cash, it's king still in this country. Now, the difference between debit and credit, so people will use the card and then they'll be asked at the terminal to enter four digit. Is, right. is it better to go through that way or is that the way that? They well, there's actually a, a nuance to it. So you'll go to those uh, point of sale scanners where you can insert or swipe your card, but there's also um, where you can draw it across the, or tap it across the terminal. Mm -hmm. That is actually the most secure out of the three options because the swipe, they can put a reader in there. They can actually put a reader now inside the chip, really? which it's not as vulnerable as the swipe, but it's still got some vulnerability depending upon who, again, the retailer is. Mm -hmm. But the actual tap is, is, the better, is the best option yet because again, you're not sharing your um, pin number. So think about, and no disrespect to Target, but you go to Target, you use your debit card, you type in your pin. There are some scam artists that come up behind you and they'll do some kind of a heat check on the terminal to figure out what your PIN number is. Wow, just like in the movies. Just like in the <laughs> movies. And the um, scams that uh, people capture your card at skimmers, like at right. gas stations. Right. That's, I think, uh, happened to me, actually. It ha it's happened to me several times. You know, you go and you put your card in and it goes, not accepted, and I'm going, wait a minute. Because... I will use my debit card at a gas station because I don't mm -hmm. want to put it on a credit card. Um, and invariably, it's like, okay, what happened? And thankfully, I have a really good financial institution that shut the card down because they saw that there were some charges that just didn't make sense. Mm -hmm. So that's probably another piece of advice is to have a really good financial provider of your credit and or debit card and, find, and talk to them specifically about what are they doing to protect you. You have every right to ask those questions, mm -hmm. and uh, they may give you a booklet, a very, very small print, but read it. It's worth the read. Another thing people can do, and this is what I do, I have the mobile app on right. my phone, so I just press on my phone when right. I'm at the gas station. And then yep. Sam's Club has the QR code. You just, you know, uh, take a picture of that, and it connects right to your um, credit card or your um, accounts, mm -hmm. and off you run. Well, great to have you here and share it's all great this. Great to be here. Yes. Just be warned. Let the buyer beware, right? It's always buyer beware, but if you have any questions, you're always welcome to call us. Great. Well, we're proud to be a member of the BBB. Melanie, thanks for the gifts. Not a problem. It's our pleasure. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Melanie Ducanal, CEO and President of the Better Business Bureau serving Eastern Michigan. Coming up next, the President